Hello, I'm Jo Egan and I'm going to be studying at the University of Leeds, looking into the optical properties of the upper clouds on Venus and my supervisor is going to be John Plain. The presence of an absorber on Venus has been known about since 1928. Um, you can see uh, here um, in these photos, there's some darker and lighter regions. Um, and again, down here, obviously, this is a much more recent photo. You've got the dark areas and the light areas. And obviously, the dark places are uh, where the absorber is. Um, however, despite having known about it for nearly 100 years, the cause of the absorption at 320 to 500 nanometers is still not known. Um, however, we do know a bit about it. It's in the upper cloud layer, which consists of two modes of particles. Uh, there's the, what are called mode two, which are the cloud droplets themselves, and mode one, which are small particulates. And it's proposed that this is the absorber. As well as being able to see the absorption, um, we also detect these glory patterns. So these rings are bright and dark and then bright again that you can see up here. Um, these glories are formed exclusively by spherical droplets, so the cloud droplets. Um, however, if we compare the observed pattern, so these red dots here, uh, to what we'd expect from the cloud droplets or even droplets with a slightly higher refractive index, so these green and purple lines, you can see that they don't match. Um, However, if small particles are included in the droplets, then we get this blue line here, and you can see that matches really well with the observations. So this suggests that the mode one particles, the absorber, um, are also inside the cloud droplets. Many candidates for the absorber have been proposed over the years. This diagram here shows just a few of them, um, but none of them can fully explain the absorption, especially not at this part here from 400 to 500 nanometers, as you can see, none of them quite match this curve. And that's probably because these models are based on the bulk optical properties of the absorbers. And so that may not be representative of how they behave as an aerosol or in droplets. So that's where my research will come in. And um, to start off, I'll test whether candidates are suitable, such as if they can be inserted into droplets. I'll then carry out some ensemble aerosol, or if that's not possible, bulk liquid tests to rule out any unsuitable candidates. Then I'll be carrying out single droplet tests to accurately measure the refractive index and using those results to model glory formation and atmospheric behavior. In an ideal world, one candidate would fit the absorption and explain everything perfectly, but more realistically, it may be a combination of several species. So I'll try to predict promising mixtures and then repeat the steps to test those mixtures. Thank you for your attention.